All right. What is up, traders? What's up, tycoons? Time to give you guys another natural gas video. Uh, we're going to break down natural gas, why I'm bullish on natural gas, right? Um, and we're going to talk about boil specifically in today's video. Now, if you're looking for natural gas content and videos, I do natural gas videos every single week. So this is going to be a great channel for you guys to subscribe to if you're looking for constant natural gas news and updates. All right. Now, enough of that being said, we're going to jump straight into the video and a summary all right of today's video is basically we have a developing el nino which could lead to increased demand for natural gas to power air conditioners and the potential closure of europe's largest natural gas field may result in a surge in demand for north american lng the pro shares ultra bloomberg natural gas etf is a high risk high reward investment option due to its exposure to natural gas futures prices and potential for roll and volatility decay Short-term traders may consider a speculative buy on the Boyle ETF, but long-term investors should seek exposure elsewhere. Now, before we go any further, as always, the content provided on this channel is for informational and educational purposes only and is not intended to be relied upon as legal, financial, or investment advice. So be sure to read through the full disclaimer, and we'll go ahead and get moving forward. All right, and we'll talk about why I am bullish on natural gas. Now, there's two main reasons why I'm currently bullish on natural gas prices. First, the latest forecast from the NOAA calls for a hotter than normal summer in most of the United States. And that's what we're seeing here in this graph right here, okay? If you see red and orange is leaning above and likely above, and most of the United States is leaning above or likely above hotter temperatures. Now, this is great, and this has been a slightly forecasted, okay? And the reason being is if you've been watching my channel for the past six months, the whole narrative has been a hotter than normal winter, a warm winter narrative. And that's actually was bearish for the price of natural gas, right? That was really fueling a lot of the bearish thesis was that, oh, it's a warmer than, uh, it's a warm winter. It's warmer than expected. Well, those warmer, win uh, the, that warm winter narrative, they were pushing that in April and even uh, in the very beginning of May. And we're now here in June and it's turning into a hot summer narrative. So while many investors associate natural gas with winter heating demand, there's also a summer cooling season where air conditioning use translates into natural gas demand as natural gas power plants are typically used to fill peak demand. Now, if we look at El Nino to drive hot weather, the hot summer projection is driven by El Nino conditions that were con officially confirmed by the NOAA on June 8th. El Nino tends to cause drier and hotter weather across the U.S. and Canada. And that's what we're seeing here in this graph right here in this nice visualization. We can see an extended Pacific jet stream amplified storm track right, that's going to be causing drier and hotter weather across the U.S. and Canada. And what's interesting and scary for climate watchers is that we are entering the current El Nino with global sea temperatures near unprecedented levels. This is despite the cooling effects of three years of La Nina, all right? And that's what we're taking a look at this graph here, okay? Over here is we're seeing um, the global sea, uh, sea temperatures near unprecedented levels, okay? Now, I've dropped lots and lots of videos uh, on natural gas, okay, um, going over seasonality. I dropped a video on, you know, the specific seasonality of June, all right? I dropped one on April, okay? I've also dropped um, videos about when natural gas, the spot price is at that $2 and below level. Those are all great videos, really, you know, summarizing what, a lot of the reasons why I'm interested in natural gas and why I'm bullish on natural gas. Now, just to give you guys full disclosure, I only have a very, very tiny position. I closed about 90% of my position for profits and I have a very small position left in UNG at the moment. Okay. Very minimal amount, but I am looking for my next possible entry. Okay. And just because I'm bullish on something doesn't mean I have to be in it at the moment. Okay. I'm much more of a trader than a long-term investor. Okay. Now <clears throat> another bullish thesis. Okay. Here is that Europe may see increased LNG demand. Now, this is the liquefied natural gas, okay? And there's many different ways to invest in natural gas besides UNG, cold, and boil, okay? Those are all just natural gas ETFs, all right? But they are not actual, you know, uh, ETFs that hold stocks that have actual earnings, right, and profits and revenues. I've dropped several videos, okay, going over the top natural gas companies and the top LNG companies, okay? If you guys are interested for individual stocks that you can invest in that are related to the natural gas sector, just type in Zachley Trades, uh, top LNG stocks or top natural gas stocks, and it'll pull right up 
and give you guys a list of companies that you can look for as possible investments, okay? Now, <clears throat> speaking about Europe seeing increased LNG demand, what's really great is that the U.S. has become a global powerhouse ever since the Russia-Ukraine war, okay? And that disrupted natural gas supplies into Europe and European turn to global supplies via liquefied natural gas to plug their shortfall. This caused natural gas prices in North America to spike over $10, and was the main driver of Boyle's amazing early 2022 performance. Now, recently, we got the news that the Dutch government is looking to permanently shut its Groningen gas field, Europe's largest, due to environmental concerns. Although the Dutch government has been winding down production at Groningen, I can't say that word, okay? I'm not Dutch. Uh, this shutdown news comes as a surprise, as Europe is still grappling with natural gas supply disruptions due to the ongoing Russia-Ukraine war. Now, this news sent Dutch TTF natural gas prices soaring and ignited a spark underneath North American gas prices as well. And that's what we're taking a look here, okay? You're seeing this huge spike right now. And a lot of people have been seeing, you know, uh, and having some good returns if you're a short-term trader on Boyle and in and, and UNG and different natural gas funds, okay? There has been some positive price action here lately. If we dive deeper, okay, one of the main reasons that people are attracted to boil specifically, okay, um, is due to its casino-like returns, all right? Now, for example, in 2022, the boil ETF returned an incredible 4X when the Russian invasion of Ukraine led to natural gas prices soaring, okay? But, however, if held for too long, the boil ETF will eventually trend towards zero due to the role in volatility decay mentioned above. And this is one reason why I've never personally owned boil shares, okay? Now, I try to give you guys really good quality content, okay, regarding natural gas, and I've dropped several videos, okay, uh, regarding, you know, the recent stock split that's approaching boil. So if you didn't know, they're about to do a reverse stock split. I've got a great video. Just type in Zachley Trades, boil stock split. It'll pop right up, and it's going to explain exactly what's going on okay they're doing a one for 20 stock split so that's a really really big amount and i actually predicted uh which it wasn't hard to predict but nobody was covering the content there so uh, you know uh, a while ago i predicted that boyle was going to have a reverse stock split it's happened every two to three years in recent history and sure enough we were at that time period where Boyle was due for a reverse stock split, and that's what we're seeing. It's coming up very soon. If you want to know the exact date, just watch that video, okay? Now, <clears throat> normally, I would not recommend investors to consider the Boyle ETF as it has one of the worst designed investment structures, in my opinion. However, in this article, I'll, um, you know, I've already laid out a bull case for those adventurous souls who may want to take the plunge. OK, now there's many great ways that you can hedge yourself. OK, um, a lot of people buy into things blindly. Right. And I do a lot of one on one coaching sessions and a lot of them are related to boil. If you guys are ever interested, you can always email me exactly trades at gmail .com, and we can do a one on one coaching session uh, and go over whatever you would like. All right. Just email me and we'll go into it. But a lot of people bought into boil blindly. OK, they bought into it back in the 40s and the 30s and 10s and the 12s. And they thought that, hey, Boyle's going to go back up to 100. And they didn't really have any type of plan moving forward, right? They bought blindly. It went lower. They bought more. And now we've seen Boyle continue to plunge. And they've taken massive losses, whether it's 70, 80, 90%. I've spoken with people down five figures, six figures, even seven figures. Um, and so, you know, I have a really good video titled The Second Most Important Video You'll Ever Watch. Okay. And just type in natural gas, exactly trades. Second most important video you ever watch. And it really goes over a really great strategy that you guys can use to hedge yourself. Okay. Um, it's important to have downside protection. Buying into things blindly with no type of risk management is going to get you killed. And that video goes over one potential strategy that you guys could potentially use. There's a plethora of risk management strategies, but risk management is very important. And there's a reason they call natural gas the widow maker. And that video is going to help you guys out. So that way you guys don't fall victim to the widow maker and you can hedge yourself to the downside to minimize your losses and reduce your losses rather than experiencing massive losses in case things don't go your way. Now, again, I believe the developing El Nino could be one for the record books as we are starting off with near record temperatures already. And El Nino will likely boost air conditioning demand which will require more natural gas to fuel peaking plants. And furthermore, the news out of Europe that is that the Dutch government is looking to permanently close its largest natural gas field, the Groningen. 
The proposed closure with gas supplies disrupted due to Russia-Ukraine war will likely cause European natural gas prices to surge, which will pull up North American gas prices due to the LNG connection. And while the bull case is enticing, investors are warned that the Boyle ETF is highly volatile, and even if natural gas prices rise in the medium term, the Boyle ETF could still lose money due to roll and volatility decay. I have a great video going over the myths and the, you know, facts basically of the decay surrounded boil. Okay. Yes, there is contango. Yes, there is roll decay and volatility decay. And you need to know about those things, which I go into in detail, but under the right market conditions. Okay. Um, you know, you can still make profits in something like boil, but you need to be aware of the risk and truly understand them because many people don't understand a lot of the things that they're getting into. Okay. So that's why I dropped that video. Now, when you look at a fund overview, it seeks to provide daily returns that are twice the return of the Bloomberg Natural Gas Sub Index. The index reflects the daily support uh, or performance of a rolling position in front month natural gas futures. As the expiration date for the futures contracts approaches, the index replaces expiring contracts with later expirations. Okay. And when you look at the total returns, it's not pretty, guys. Okay. It's pretty rough when you look at the total returns. So, and this is not something that if you're a long term investor, you're not looking to hold boil for five years. For 10 years, right? This is much more of a trading instrument. So keep that in mind when you're trying to look. And if you take a look at the holdings, okay, you can basically see here that they are extremely over leveraged in natural gas futures. All right. Um, and then they have all these sub index swaps right here. All right. And you know, you can really break down the entire holdings of Boyle by simply looking them up. Um, but just to break that down for you guys, this is it right here. This is a summary as of June 15, 2023. Now, the main problem with the Boyle ETF and all futures based ETFs is that futures prices tend to be in contango or price, prices farther out in maturity are more expensive. Every time one of Boyle's futures expire, the Boyle ETF must sell the expiring future and buy a more expensive future contract as a replacement. The mechanical roll process leads to the ETF decaying over time. To compound this issue, the Boyle ETF is leveraged, providing twice the daily exposure to natural gas futures prices. Levered ETFs have positive convexity, uh, convexity in the direction of their exposures. This means that one's exposure to a given underlying asset grows if the price action is in one's favor. For example, assume you invested $100 in Boyle. If the underlying index returns 5% on day one, the position will go to $110. That's two times the 5% return. If the index returns 5% on day two, the position will grow to $121. This is more than twice the theoretical two-day compound return of 10.25% or $120.50. So this is kind of what I mean, right? You know, you can make money on these things during the right market conditions and it can compound your returns. However, if the return experience is plus 5% followed by negative 5%, investors end up with $99, significantly less than the than twice the two-day compounded loss of 0.25% or 99.5. This loss is due to volatility decay. While volatility decay may appear small on a one-day basis, over the long run, this can turn into a very significant slippage, especially for a volatile underlying asset class like natural gas fuel. Futures. Okay. So, in conclusion, I do believe a bullish case can be made for a speculative trade on the Boyle ETF or something like the UNG ETF or maybe even natural gas related stocks, provided investors know what they're getting into. The Boyle ETF is only suitable for short term swing trades. A developing El Nino is expected to lead, uh, lead to a surge in demand for natural gas to power air conditioners. Furthermore, there is news out of Europe that the Dutch government may permanently shutter Europe's largest natural gas field due to environmental concerns. This could lead to a surge in demand from North American LNG. And I believe that short-term uh, traders can consider a speculative buy on the Boyle ETF, but longer-term investors may want to seek their exposures elsewhere. Now, big red flags right here, okay? Something you do want to be aware of is that Boyle is doing a spot, uh, stock split very, very soon. So this can create a taxable event if you guys are in Boyle, okay? And it can actually force you to sell some of your shares even for a loss if you're not aware of the stock split, okay? So, you know, make sure to watch my video on the stock split, all right? Uh, if you guys are interested in, you know, really truly understanding some of the things uh, around the decay, okay? And you guys want to know the myths and the facts, I have a great video out there. Just type in Zachary Trades, Natural Gas, Boil, Decay. Uh, it'll pull right up. All right. Those are really, really great videos that I'm putting out there for free for you guys. 
Um, and, you know, if you guys ever want a one-on-one -on -one session, again, just email me at zacklytrades at gmail.com and we can work on setting up either a 30-minute or a one-hour Zoom session, um, just depending on what you would prefer.